Welcome back to ESA Winter 2021. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fondin. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Koei Tecmo Europe, Neo2, the complete edition, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now, it's time for a race. We've got Jaguar King versus D Limes 13 in Metal Gear Solid 2 HD edition. Take it away. Thank you. So we are going to be seeing a, an incredible race on the highest difficulty for Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, bef before we get into that, I want to just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Plywood and I am joined with... I am Apache Smash. Uh, glad to be here. Yep, so we are going to see a race on the HD version of Metal Gear Solid 2. Both runners are going to be running the Xbox Series release, which is the 360 release, but through the backwards compatibility. On the highest difficulty, European Extreme, not game over if discovered. So uh, let's just get this underway in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! And they're off. So if you've never seen this game before, there's uh, two distinct chapters, the tank, the tanker and the plant. Uh, we're going to start in tanker. All so right. we're going to be playing Salt you. Snake on a boat uh, in lower Manhattan Harbor. Uh, and we're going to be taking some pictures, some hot pics with our camera of the new Metal Gear that's in the depths of this boat. Yeah, so on uh, the European Extreme Difficulty, guards will have the best vision, you take the most damage, many of the bosses will kill you in one hit. Um, aside from that, both runners will be attempting to go for rank 1, the highest rank, uh, big boss. So they will do non-lethal strategies everywhere, uh, attempt to get no alerts. If they do get an alert, they may switch to some lethal uh, backups later in the run. Um, but to begin with, at least, they certainly will go for the highest rank. That's right. So we're trying to be stealthy throughout this run, try not to take any continues, and try to minimize damage as much, much as possible. Uh, deaths on this category can be very costly, especially near the end of the run, so we're going to try to minimize those kinds of mistakes. Uh, both of these runners are have been running this game for a very long time. I'd say Jag definitely more than Limes, but Limes is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to Metal Gear Solid 2, a very accomplished runner. Um, both runners doing a little strat to distract the guard uh, that's in that little cafeteria area uh, so that the, the guard doesn't notice them. Yeah, they're coming up to the uh, first boss now, which is Olga. Uh, as I said before, bosses on this difficulty are a one-hit kill. Olga can spawn on either the left or the right. Uh, looks like Jag got a right and I believe Lime's got a left. You want the left side on European Extreme because you're going to attempt to uh, loop her, so infinitely uh, be able to headshot her, which Lime's gets. And Jag gets. Jag's, Jag's getting it as well. So it looks like we're having a very similar race so far, which is very good. Olga can be random, so it's nice to see good luck for both uh, competitors. Uh, nice neck and neck uh, going into the next part of Tanker here. Uh, you might be noticing that uh, Limes is playing in Japanese and uh, Jaguar is playing in English. Um, the difference differences between them aren't too major. It's a uh, difference in control slightly. Um, and uh, there's a few cutscenes that lose you a little bit of time in Japanese, but it's only like a couple seconds throughout the whole run. It's not that big of a deal. They're pretty much equivalent. Yeah, I believe Japanese is favored in um, individual level speed runs. It's actually faster to do the tanker on Japanese, but in full game, it, it doesn't matter. So you probably are noticing that they're firing their, uh, their loud pistol, the USP, to oh, yeah make the guards hear them early, what we call a warning shot strategy. Um, both guard, uh, both competitors tranking that guard or hitting the radio, uh, as they call it in. As long as the alert is not called in, uh, it doesn't count as an alert. Uh, that's why uh, we play with not game over if discovered. Yeah, you'll see a lot of um, strategies involved in manipulating the guards to go onto their radio where you can deal with them much easier. 
Um, while they're on their radio, they're completely stationary and they're not firing at you. Um, in this room, the engine room, if you do it um, accurately, you can avoid being shot. Unfortunately, neither runner gets it, so they're both going to take a shot here, um, which is unfortunate because uh, it makes the guard rush so much harder, um, but it's very difficult to get the fast engine room where you don't take a hit from the guard. Yeah, the engine room movement-wise is one of the hardest rooms in Duro Extreme Tanker, if you ask me. And now i got to shoot all these sensors. They, I think they shot them a little bit differently, but uh, they both get the job done. Still a very close race um, as we go into Deck 2 Port. Uh, things move by very quickly. That's one of the benefits of playing on the Xbox series. Uh, Limes is playing on a Series F. S and Jaguar is playing on a Series X. They both have the same load time, so it doesn't actually matter which one you play on. Yeah, I noticed Limes was actually very safe with his sensors there. I've never I've never seen him so carefully take the sensors. I think Jag got a little bit of time to catch up there. Small minor things. If you miss those sensors, you blow up the boat and you take a continue, so good to be careful with them. Yeah, better be safe than sorry. It's not good to take a continue this early on into the run. It can really shake you mentally. They're both, you know, veteran runners, but, you know, that's not something you want to uh, feel going into the rest of the game. So this is the guard rush. Uh, there's multiple guards that they have to take out. Again, you can't take that many hits, you know, two shots and you're dead. So you have to go for these tricky head shots, just knowing where these guards move and taking them out with a clean M9 headshot put them to sleep when the uh, yeah. the guard comes out from the right to the left firing his rifle that guard can't actually hit you now you're gonna see both runners lethally kill the final three guards because the scene ends so fast after those three guards die they don't actually get counted as kills so they don't show up on the score screen as kills as long as you take them out like both runners did there you can lethally kill those guards to end the fight sooner but still uh, get the highest rank Exactly, and now both uh, combatants going into holds one, very scary room, both going for a ladder glitch to zip to the bottom, and going for a trank shot uh, on the guard by the projector. You have to move very carefully, folks, as you go across that projector, you might get spotted by the light, and that'll cause a continue, which is very bad. Yeah, this room is uh, game over if discovered, so uh, it's very, very scary, you have to be very purposeful with how you move. This last guard that you hold up in hold two, um, very difficult because you will turn around if you're too slow. So we're gonna see uh, Jag go for two spot camera and Lime's going for a more safer variant, the three spot. Um, what we mean by spot is uh, which places you spot, uh, stop to take your photos. Uh, you might have seen some kind of weird photos. You're supposed to take a shot of the front left, the front, the front right, and the Marines logo. The Marines logo is supposed to be on the rear of the Ray, but uh, we can take a pretty sneaky shot that the game says is the Ray, uh, the Marine logo, but uh, I didn't really see it myself. Yeah, it's definitely there. As long as Archon says it's okay, we can progress on to the tanker. The the real uh, main chunk of this game will no longer be playing as Solid Snake. We will instead be playing as Raiden. Um, Raiden controls very differently from Snake, most notably um, his running cartwheel that he can do. Um, will actually save very minuscule amounts of time over long straight, so you'll see them use um, cartwheels where possible to, to speed up uh, these rooms. Yeah, so the thing about the uh, the roll, the aerial, the cartwheel, the spinny thing that Raiden does, um, it does save a little bit of time doing it, but if you like roll into a wall or, um, you know, get caught up on a corner or something, you're going to lose like a second. So um, high end movement in this game is very precise. You know, you're trying to make the best lines possible, rolling in the, the best possible direction to maximize that time, but... If you're not careful, ah, says Jag's <laughs> code name. Um, well, you will go ah, because you lost a second from rolling into a wall. So thank you, Jag. You exactly expressed what it feels like to uh, make a mistake in your movement. Yeah. Um, on the uh, highest difficulty here, there is an additional guard that wakes up in this room hidden in the back. Um, so we always head over to him as soon as we've used the, uh, the node. 
Um, and we want to be prepared for this guard at the back. Yeah, we're going to do a little cute little setup here to uh, punch him in the groin. Groin punches are pretty awkward. You can do them from the back. Um, you just have to aim well and time it well, and you can punch them in the groin and it knocks them out. It's a very useful technique on European Extreme. Um, just in case people are wondering why this difficulty is called European Extreme, it's like, well, why is it European? Um, so the original PS2 release, Sons of Liberty, for the PAL region was delayed, and their reward for the PAL region was, hey, we're going to make the hardest difficulty for you. We're going to make Extreme even more extreme. We're going to call it European Extreme. Yeah, Thank you did. for purchasing our game. <laughs> <laughs> the, the same thing didn't happen in Metal Gear Solid 3, but they kept the naming convention. Um, but it isn't actually a separate dis difficulty in 3. Uh, Euro is just game over if discovered turned on extreme. It's funny that they kept it for that game and then got rid of it in the next one. But I like it. I like the name. It has mystique to it. Well, the original uh, Snake Eater version for North America, I don't know if it actually had European Extreme. I don't think it did. Uh, someone will probably correct me and Metal Gear Speedrunners Discord be like, that one it actually did! <laughs> but... <laughs> no, please, please do. I'm interested to know because I, I am from a PAL region, so I only saw it as it, as it came out here. So we're actually we'll... seeing two different lines um, in this room between the runners. I think uh, it's just slightly different, but I don't think it matters as far as I'd, time goes. Yeah, I think it might just be preference. Um, one thing that we want to mention is when it comes to avoiding alerts, uh, as we go into plant, you're going to notice that they're like entering a room while the guard is like calling in the alert. Um, as long as you don't hear the alert siren, it goes like, eh, 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 um, that does not count as alert, so as long as you don't hear that as you enter the next room, you're fine. If you do hear that, that's an alert, and that's Big Boss gone. Yeah, and if you hit the alert during the transition, the alert won't carry through to the next room, which is still is still good, but it will count against you on, on the score screen. So, um, we call them tran transition alerts. Yeah, the main thing you really don't want is an alert that carries through... Uh, to the next room because you got it early because uh, having an alert is a bad situation. So now we've reached the uh, Stillman section. So we meet Peter Stillman for the first time okay, and he's it. going to tell us right? to defuse bombs. Okay. So he will give us a, a coolant spray in order to be able to defuse these bombs that are located around all the struts. And this is known as one of the hardest sections in the entire run. Um, the bomb disposal is no joke. Some of the struts are particularly difficult. Um, strut D comes to mind immediately, which is extremely difficult. Yes, go, I told you. Oof, that was uh, scary on... Jags end, uh, that cipher. Um, the cipher spotted but did not cause the alert. Mm. The Very risky, scary. risky little situation. This struck the uh, bomb that Jags actually defusing. We can defuse that without even opening the door, um, but the setup is so unbelievably precise that no one's managed to do it in a run yet. It saves a theoretical three seconds. <laughs> So this guard is going to take a nice swim, but uh, we did not actually kill the guard. It was the force of gravity that killed him. It's just physics, folks. It's just physics. Yeah, it's always a fun one. Uh, we had that a lot in the previous run of Ground Zeroes, where th things were killing guards, but it's not us. It's fine. Um, and knocking over guards like that uh, does not count as a kill. So on the higher difficulties, there's extra bombs you have to defuse, like on this roof. We're gonna see that the uh, runners are two doing doing two different strategies. The one that Limes did is a bit faster, but more risky if you fail the roll. Uh, basically, the guard gets held up and is facing away. And <laughs> on Lime String, you may notice that <laughs> he missed the punch. I'm telling you, folks, it's a really awkward 
punch to uh, hit them from the hit the groin. It's that one in particular you always see people like having to adjust for repeatedly. Um, that stra A guard. Um, you might be noticing that they're defusing a bomb they don't actually see. If you're standing in particular positions on the opposite side, you can defuse that bomb. Another thing you're probably noticing is that they're standing up and canceling the animation of standing up. It's what we call a coolant rise. Um, basically just you equip the coolant, stand up in the first person and uh, re-equip your gun or go to unequip and you stand up without the animation. It's a nice little time save. Yeah, it saves a huge amount of time. That, that standing animation is ridiculous as well, so I'm glad that coolant rise exists. Strut F, it's really, really important that you throw the chaff the moment you enter the room because you have just enough time to uh, cancel out the alert just before the alert is fully called in. It's very tight, very tight. Yeah, it's another one of those rooms that immediately comes to mind when I think of the more difficult struts in bomb disposal. Strut F is uh, cool. You'll notice the runners are picking up stun grenades. Um, they'll do that throughout the run, um, but they won't actually use them until right at the end. But very, very important to route those stun pickups in. So Limes is a little bit ahead. He's had a little bit more clean movement than Jag, but still anyone's race. It's, they're still relatively close. You're going to see that they're doing two different lines, actually, in the EF um, bridge, which is a very scary bridge as well. It's cool to see where where runners will take rooms slightly safer than another, and where other runners are willing to, to risk it all. Um, there are things you can do to speed up rooms that, that may put you a little bit out of your comfort zone, for sure. Especially in a race environment. You know, it's, it's easier to you know, put your whole run at risk early on when you're just doing personal best attempts, but in a race, uh, everything is on the line. Um, so in this room, they have to address all these guards in a certain order and take out some cameras, just to make sure that they get everything addressed uh, before they defuse the bomb that goes by on the crate. You need to make sure you hit that cycle or else you're going to lose a lot of time, uh, especially because on European Extreme, guards wake up very, very quickly. Uh, from their naps. Um, when we come back down into that room, the parcel room, guards will be awake, even though we were only away for about a minute. And we're going to pick up this bomb hidden underneath the area. Um, what you'll see most runners do is there's a line on the floor that you can roll on and you'll immediately roll to the and land exactly at the right range to get it. Jack's going a little bit safer here because there is a guard on the way back. Um, he does see him slightly, you'll see who's there come up on the screen, but as long as you stay out of the guard's vision, if you touch the very edge of their vision cone, they will react and begin to walk towards you. Um, so he's fine, he's perfectly safe doing that. So Limes is going to exploit the shorter profile of the box to avoid getting spotted by the guards. Uh, the box is a very useful tool. Uh, as Jag goes for a faster strat where he holds the guard up and uses another exploit with the box, um, when you equip the box, you can make the guards avoid shooting you, which is very, very useful uh, on European Extreme when we have such limited HP. And strat D is arguably the hardest room in all of bomb disposal because it's this big open room with multiple guards and on European Extreme they have excellent vision so they can see you quite well. I think you'll see slightly different straps from the pair of them as well. Jag likes this strap where you uh, knock on and then drop down. Um, he normally goes for the headshot as well. Uh, sorry the body shot and Limes will always headshot him whereas Jag will just put two rounds in his body and wait for that guard to fall asleep. Um, it all adds up the same, but there's so many bombs in Strut D. Yeah, and the layout of the bombs is different depending on whether you're doing New Game Plus or New Game Plus Plus. Uh, what we didn't really mention about uh, New Game Plus is that uh, everyone runs on New Game Plus, at the very least, because it uh, skips a unskippable cutscene that happens in the new game. Uh, the only issue with New Game Plus, aside from the bombs potentially being in a different route, in strut D is that later on there's an RNG component that you have to deal with and we'll talk about that when it comes to it.
Yeah, so we'll see another little manipulation with the box, as, as Plywood was, did explain. Uh, you can just immediately make the guard go onto his radio, rather than shoot you. We don't want to just take shots from guards. Our health is not good enough on European Extreme to just be taking random hits from guards, so it's a really good way to, uh, to get past them. The Jaguar took a safer strategy of just tranking the guard rather than um, doing that box strategy. The box strategy that Limes did is pretty tight timing-wise. It's you, you are at risk of getting an alert. And, you know, I think we're starting to see a pattern emerge. Like, Jaguar is a little bit more risk-averse than D-Limes. D-Limes is <laughs> kind of just throwing caution to the wind to some degree. I'm not saying he's, like, being completely aggressive YOLO, but uh, Jaguar is a little bit more conservative when it comes to the race. Yeah, there's there's much riskier things you can go for later in the run, which I don't see, think we'll see either player do, uh, such as, like, not getting the body armor. Um... I, I don't think we'll see players do like that, but minor, slightly faster strats per room. Uh, I feel like that's the lines will get to a level where he's comfortable, and he'll always go for that kind of th those kind of strats. I love this strat that Jack just did. So he shoots the guard uh, with a trank, and the guard will always turn to face where he was shot from, and at the same time he's turning, um, Raiden will run the other way, um, completely fake out the guard. Yeah, I love that. You, we, 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 you could do that kind of strat in multiple games in the series. Um, just moving just as a guard's turning, it feels very satisfying because you're playing with the guard's AI and their behavior. Yeah. So we're heading down into the deep sea dock again. Um, we're going to the fortune fight. We have to defuse a bomb first. And um, Jack trailing slightly, but it's still so, so close. Yeah, Lime's movement overall is a little bit cleaner. There are certain, you know, if I'm going to critique Jag a little bit, he's still playing really well, folks. Don't don't take this like I'm trashing him or anything. But, you know, like, let's say, like, he's maybe rolling a little bit too much. Uh, if I'm just talking about, like, the strategies he's taking, a little. sometimes he could, like, turn corners a little bit sharper. But, I mean, other than that, like... They're both playing very well. No one has made like a significant mistake that's going to cost them a lot of time. So it really is still anyone's race. I think they do both do different strategies for Fortune. So Fortune is like an anti-boss fight. The only point of the fight is to survive. You can't kill her. You can't damage her in any way. Um, Limes will use the box constantly. He'll use the, t the, the box allows you a tighter turn in circle. So you can constantly run back and forth. Jack normally uses a different strat, which is uh, using the iframes of the game. When you lean up against a wall and then pop out to shoot, um, you will get iframes uh, when you peek out and when you go back in. So Jack will just do this every time he gets shot by Fortune um, to gain invincibility for the entire time he's being shot. Yeah, and we'll be using and exploiting this iframe pop out trick later on in the run as well. Uh, personally, I prefer whenever I run Extreme to uh, do the box strategy. Uh, it's more of a problem when you're playing like on the PS2 version, for instance, because uh, more lag is created. But on the Xbox Series version, this game runs at a steady 60 no matter what. So it really doesn't matter what strategy you go for. It's personal preference. Yeah, all the, all the HD collection versions bar this one do lag to some extent in certain areas of the game um, but yeah this one just stays perfectly at a good frame rate the fantastic version looks great as well yeah it was uh, a little bit of the background in HD version when it was originally released PS3 was superior to the 360 in certain ways but as time went on 360 got the last laugh Thanks to backwards compatibility. Okay, so you notice that uh, D Limes equipped the box there. Um, which seems kind of strange, but there are claymores there that you could run into, and you run into a claymore, you're you're probably gonna die in European extreme. It'll just one hit kill you. Um, and the box gives you an a tighter turning radius. You probably are noticing that we've been like just giving all these uh, positive check marks to the box, and it really is an valuable player in this uh, run on European Extreme. Yeah, it's such a, such a good tool. 
And now we're uh, going to head back up to the strutty roof and we're going to do one of the more difficult boss fights uh, in the run, which is Fat Man. Um, it's a boss fight with a gentleman who roller skates around and plants bombs. Um, really easy fight for it to get completely get away from you. Um, if you lose track of him because you have no radar, it's very difficult to find where he is. Um, we will be non lethally fighting him as well, which means we'll knock him down and then switch to the Trank Gun to deal damage. It's a very, very tough fight in this run. Yeah, and exactly like you said, it can get really really get away with from you um because he he can drop bombs uh continue to drop bombs in the fight and if he drops too many bombs it's pretty much over there's no there's very little chance you're able to freeze all the bombs he drops so you have to keep track of them and follow him closely uh even though he can go around randomly so you're gonna see that limes goes for the bottom left bomb and then the top right bomb um, very specific setup um, to basically set yourself up for a good fight or as good as you can make it. So, Fat Man's gonna laugh and then you're gonna shoot his skate. And you can get two shots on him in the head um, as long as you time the first shot well. It's good, good practice to watch the laser sight um, to make sure you know when to fire. Yeah, for getting those two shots when you knock Fat Man down, on European Extreme, the timing is really, really tight. You get very few frames to um, actually land the first trank into his head uh, before he gets the stars above his head so he can get the second one. Um, the other thing is, it takes six shots to knock him down, um, and you can run out of SOCOM ammo very quickly, and you have to be mindful of how much ammo you have, because while you're going to get more ammo to knock him down again, um, he will get an opportunity to get away from you. Very good fight from Limes. Clean, clean, clean. As uh, Jaguar goes to finish off his Fat Man. Oh man, this, this what just happened to him is something that will aggravate you to no end on this uh, on this fight. Is him falling to the ground and then bouncing off a corner. Um, it's really annoying because he could just bounce very randomly. Jag knocked him down there. He only got one shot off. Um, so Fat Man stood up, but he knew he had to go get ammo as well. But finishes the fight there. No extra bombs planted. Um, it, it is so, so easy for Fat Man to get away from you in that fight. Yeah, you really have to keep your cool um, while you're fighting Fat Man. Otherwise, the pressure can get to you, and uh, if you're not paying attention, and you're not following where he's going, uh, you're probably going to lose. It's really that difficult. Yeah, um, the sound of him even doesn't give away his position. You, you can't, like, use your headphones to hear whereabouts he is. Um, you just hear sound coming from everywhere of his roller skates. So, we, we just got the BDU, which is a disguise we're going to use that disguise to enter the shell one core uh, but we haven't completed the disguise yet we have to go back to strut f to pick up the ak and this ak is going to allow us to pretend to be one of the guards in the shell one core we need to connect rendezvous with uh richard ames we don't know who richard ames is like w what he looks like but we know he has a pacemaker. We're gonna find him by the pacemaker. But as runners, we actually know what he looks like. He's he's a guy with a mullet. He's the only one with a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the BDU is interesting because uh, it does have some like unintended consequences in gameplay. Um, it will load. It will make certain uh, cutscenes load slower if you're wearing it going into them. Um, so some places in this run we can't account for that, and some places we can. Um, it also affects guards' vision of you. Um, you're harder to see in it. So there's an area just after the Harrier where we will equip it to uh, be able to get past some guards without getting seen. Really nice uh, adjustment from Jaguar King doing a backup strat when he failed the shot on the wall to distract the guard. Very important to know your backups, especially in a race environment. Uh, if a strategy doesn't go well, you can always try to recover. You know, don't ever throw in the towel in this difficulty. If something goes 
out of place. You just got to know how to adjust. And I uh, really yeah. expect nothing less from Jaguar King. He is a professional at uh, Metal Gear games. Yeah, he's a... Uh... You know, he's, he's been around a long time. He's had so many rank ones in this game and incredible speedruns. He's got nothing but respect for him. Yeah, very diverse pool of games um, when it comes to Metal Gear. Lime's uh, relatively newer compared to Jag, but he has uh, absolutely decimated uh, several games that he's put his mind to, particularly MGS1 and MGS2. Um, so on Lime's uh, stream, you can see that he's doing a setup. He knocks on the wall, the guard starts running real fast, and then you basically set yourself up in just the right spot to uh, grab the guard and use the retinal scanner. So Ames is the guy with the mullet. Uh, that's, that's our visual cue. So Lime's is going to be looking around this room to find him. Uh, it's completely random where he is on New Game Plus, which is a bit of a, a bit annoying. Um, this spot isn't that good, but the good news is we don't have to do any weird backup stuff. Um, since the guards can see you really well, if you equip the D mic and they see you, uh, it's over. They'll be like, "That's that's definitely not one of us." Um, in that case. Uh, what you have to do, there's a weird glitch you can go for that involves a PPK, a punch-punch-kick combo, uh, and then equipping the D-Mic that'll allow you to use the D-Mic without uh, being spotted by the guards. So Jack's really hoping for a better aims here, but he's not anywhere on the southeast side. Uh, they have basically so like, the same, yeah. same aims, so... <laughs> Southwest is, as Plywood said, not really considered uh, good aims. King. You want to be on the east of the room. Now, uh, Limes is doing the shell one exit. And I think he's going for the crazy risky strat. That is That's so difficult so to do. So risky doing that roll. So that guard with the big helmet. Uh, that's the backup unit or the uh, that that they get called on caution. If one of those guards with the helmets and the shields spot you, that's an automatic alert. They don't call it in. So that strategy is very tight in order to uh, roll into that guard. Very impressive that he went for that. Very Absolutely gutsy. not recommended in races and even in runs in most cases. Um, if you don't get that roll absolutely perfectly, or sorry, the cartwheel absolutely perfectly, that assault team guard, as Plowd said, gives you an instant alert. Jackie was going to show you uh, the, what's <laughs> this the, the is same what most strat. This, do. Is, this is what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> what you should do if you're learning this category is probably just drink the guard and take your, you know. I was absolutely two overwhelmed by that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was very surprised. <laughs> very, very surprised. Um, Again, very important to take out these ciphers as you go across the bridge. Now, Jaguar is uh, nice and patient, making sure to take out those ciphers well and good. Uh, as Limes is approaching the Shell 1-2 connecting bridge, mm, this is where we're going to be using the PSG-1 rifle that we just picked up in Strut F um, to take out sensors. Now, there's a lot of sensors on the highest difficulty including two that are on ciphers and if you shoot the cipher the uav the drone whatever you want to call it um you will blow up the bridge so you have to make sure you aim very carefully and hit that sensor and not the the cipher this is um a really difficult portion of the i keep saying this about i keep saying this is difficult it, it's all really difficult it's, it's all but the, difficult yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but these sensors into Harrier, into Leap of Faith, uh, into Perimeter, a very precarious part of the run, uh, really easy to get a continue on. <sighs> Limes is being very patient, very patient with that shot. Um, right after the sensors, uh, we're about to do what I would say is like the hardest fight in the game to learn, arguably. Um, you could make an argument for Rays as well, but Harrier's pretty rough. Um, the Harrier is a jet, it goes very fast, and you have to know extremely well where to aim and when to shoot, um, because the fight goes by very quickly, especially on a steady 60 frames per second, uh, you don't have a whole lot of time to think. It's all muscle memory, so. 
even just the movement to picking up the stinger here can lose you enough time to not get these initial shots but limes opens with a five shot setup which is optimal but the five shot is tough and now uh you might get into some rng nonsense with the harrier thankfully the harrier did not fly into the water so this is a very good start for limes um Going down here, uh, we're going to time a shot based off of this cutscene. You skip the cutscene at the correct time, and you'll be able to get two shots on the Harrier. Uh, just, just to remind everyone, if if Limes makes a mistake here and gets hit by the missiles, he's dead. It's it's over. Um, yeah, so it's one hit kill. very scary. <laughs> oh, accidentally hitting the Kasatka. Unfortunate. Jack's opening with a five shot as well, so he's going for... The, the fast possible harrier as well. Very cool. Um, you're gonna see Limes exploit that eye iframes pop out right here. Uh, <laughs> makes makes this uh, look really goofy, but it's very useful. Doing the pop out. Yeah, on your uh, optimally you get two chances to hit the harrier before it goes into the missile phase. If you try and hit it three times, you're going to die. Like those, those missiles are going to get you before you can get the iframes. Ooh, Lime's accidentally firing without locking onto the Harrier. If you don't lock on first, the missile is going to die pretty quickly. Uh, so, very unfortunate. But I think Lime's is about finished. Oh, he's hitting the strut! Oh, this is not a... This is uncharacteristic from Lime's. Um, cause this is that really is... good for Jack because I think he can finish here. Yeah, I You'll think have to so. Do the missiles, but... Yeah, ideally you finish just before the missiles fly, but that's essentially a perfect carrier. But I think Jack can. Uh... Yeah, that's yeah, a he's got significant, it. That... significant time save for Jaguar King. He is really in this. Um, that was incredible. So, yeah, going to that last phase that Limes uh, went to. It loses like 20 seconds, so um, very nice from Jaguar King, keeping his cool. Um, you're going to notice that D-Limes just equipped the BDU uh, to use that, that uh, camo. Oh, and he fell over the edge, but he's trying to use the camo uh, uh, effect of the BDU to avoid getting spotted by these guards, but now he's going to have to wait. Yeah, I was going to say, can he still get past? I think he'll just take the alert, yeah. right? You have to, well, you just have to wait. If you if you fail your movement at all, you have to just wait for the guards to go by far enough. Um, since they're both still on big boss pace, they're trying to maintain it. So that's another another time time loss. But uh, Jack uh, takes the alert. He didn't get the cartwheel. Um, we just got raided by GDQ for 1,200 people as well. So well, welcome everyone. <laughs> this is a really difficult room to do with an alert for Jack. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I'm. I, I, I don't know about you, Apache, but my anxiety just shot yeah, up it's through the roof. I really don't. <laughs> I genuinely don't know how this room works with an alert. I've never seen it, so. Um, my friend is bleeding out over here. Someone get a medic. <laughs> he has exactly no help. Um, but Jag is an experienced player. Even if we don't know what he's doing, I'm sure he does. So. Uh, you know, I think I think the the option here is either to go pick up the chaff or yeah, he's gonna just shoot the the ciphers. This is not not ideal. It's big time loss, but it's probably still better than a continue. Oh, he's gonna have oh, to like PSG one. PSG, PSG one. one. It. No. PSG one. Yeah, shoot, s snipe him. Snipe those suckers. Oh no! Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Uh, sometimes, sometimes in the commentator seat, uh, we start wanting to pull out your hair a little bit. Whoa, he almost yeah, that, fell off. The angle that Jag took with the cartwheel was so dangerous because he was going towards the side with no railing. Um, I did say just can, before this section started. Fly like... off. <laughs> like, if you roll off, you will roll off. There's no invisible wall, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did say it's a precarious section of the game, and uh, I didn't expect them to put us so much through the ringer. Uh, but that that exceptional Harrier from Jag will really stand him in good stead here. Um, you, when you're bleeding in your on any difficulty, you can recover your health by crouching, uh, which is what Jag did just to get 
off bleeding. When you're bleeding, it can affect certain rooms, so um, it's good to get rid of that and just to eat in a couple of seconds needed. I don't know if the bleeding would actually change anything, though, per se. Not, not at this point, but I think you may have to drain his health off when he's swimming as well, right? So... Um, yeah, it's possible that, that he just wants to make sure that he doesn't um, drown if the swimming goes poorly. Um, the mines that you see uh, while you're swimming, those are one-hit kills, by the way. Uh, as Limes is uh, setting up to fire this Nikita, uh, we do not want to hit the president, um, or the prez, as the game refers to the president of the United States. Uh, prez with a Z, much cooler than prez with an S. Yeah, um, it's weird that they they put it like that because uh, we've we've edited that text and the president perfectly fits there, so we've no idea why they chose to write press. It's <laughs> so funny, right? It's like <laughs> they just just wanted to be cool in two thousand one. Like, ah, oh, he's the press. I wonder if they just did it like as a placeholder and then forgot, like <laughs> meant to change it back later or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, the accurate like the shortening of president is definitely not. P R E Z, it's P R E S. So it's just like, why do they do that? But I don't know. It's just funny. Uh, on European Extreme, your your route with the Nikita missile is uh, much more obstructed. Um, basically, on lower difficulties, it's easier to get to that to the uh, box which controls the electric floor. Um, you have to be very careful. The Nikita has two speeds. Uh, when you let it fly without turning it, it will go up to its fastest speed. Um, the key to doing that section fast is just knowing where you can fly straight with it. That's right. So we have a little, little bit of downtime, but we're about to enter a very interesting point in the race. Um, so there's an option both runners can go for, and that is a technique that we call the swim glitch. And the swim glitch allows you to essentially avoid swimming through the intended route. You swim out of bounds over the structure of the uh, lower floor and it's a fairly tight trick um time wise like you only get a few I tries at it but essentially the the goal is to ride up the corner um and you could go for it to try to save time over your opponent or keep it safe and just swim normally so we're gonna see what limes does he's just gonna he's just gonna swim normally and uh not do swim glitch so that's what limes is electing to do we'll see what uh Jag is going to do. Limes is still on Big Boss pace. Um, Jag is unfortunately not, but neither neither runner is taking a continue, which is fantastic. And some sort of miracle with the way that uh, Jag did that. I know. <laughs> some kind oh, of miracle man. that he didn't take a continue. Um, every respect for knowing his backups and doing knowing exactly what he needed to do there. I was I was pretty worried. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing about not doing swim glitch is that you can pick up the stinger ammo if you need it. Yeah, so D Limes took that. Okay, let's see if Jaguar is uh, gonna swim normally. Yeah, he's. So they both decided to swim normally. Respect. Um, I think both of them are feeling a little bit shaky. Um, Limes from his Harrier and jag from his perimeter. And just maybe don't want to take that risk or not comfortable with it. So here's Vamp. Um, essentially what you're going to be doing here to make what's usually a hard fight casually on European Extreme easy is get him stuck into an attack loop, so he's going to keep on swinging his knife. But there is a problem with that, isn't there, Apache, with this uh, whole knife attack, right? Yeah, so he throws out his knife and a huge arc around him. It's a one-hit kill. Uh, it's so easy to accidentally get hit by. Limes accidentally threw out a punch-punch kick there, so Lime, uh, Vamp is going to dive into the water again. Uh, what we do is just fire stingers into the water and make him um, come out as quickly as possible and then just try and set up the loop again. This is um, a really big time loss. This is going to give Jag an opportunity because they're on the same fight now. They're on the same fight. So, again, you got to be really careful that you don't get hit by this knife. Um, the arc is very deceiving. It's larger than you think it is. So, Limes is just trying to get out of here because uh, <laughs> he had a bit of a struggle time in the middle there so let's see if jag can keep it clean and not have uh vamp jump back in the water there's also a strategy that you want to go for with this um is you want to finish the fight with a kick so you want to do your full 
punch punch kick combo and finish with that last kick and you'll get a fast cutscene uh, to finish the fight. Let's see if Jag's gonna get it. He didn't get it. Um, it's tricky. You have to do it at really just the tough. right time. Yeah, it's really tough. But it saves a few seconds. It's quite nice. Jack um, catching up some time there for sure, though. I mean, he's really on Limes' tail now. Yeah, this is still, you know, there's probably like a 20-ish, 30-ish second gap. But, which sounds like a lot. The thing is, uh, <laughs> when we get into endgame proper, things can get very dicey very quickly. So... It's going to be another one of those moments where I tell you it's a really difficult part of the run. Um. <laughs> yeah, if you've been keeping track of that, uh, if you've been keeping a tally, you'll probably notice. Oh, this is just a hard. This is just a hard run. And yeah, you'd be right. <laughs> There's a yes. lot of uh, spooky moments. It's no joke. I can't. Even, I mean, I, but both of these guys I know have been in, participated in many races, but um, being on the big stage at ESA, I'm sure they're uh, feeling some type of way about this race. So, we just met up with Emma Emmerich, and we are going to be escorting her. Uh, she has a very valuable piece of data that uh, we will use for story purposes. It's, it's very important, but what you gotta know is that she can't swim, so we have to swim for her. And there is definitely technique involved with uh, holding her hand. You need to like position yourself well and move appropriately. Uh, there are, you know, we, like, we'll bump her sometimes to, like, push her forward. That way we cover a little bit of distance while we're holding her hand. It's, you know, there's, like, a little bit of speed tech, but this is uh, where the run slows down a little bit. Um, Limes is going to pick up the PSG-1T, uh, which is a tranquilizing uh, sniper rifle. Uh, very useful. I don't think we've let the host jump in at all once, by I the know, way, so yeah, we should definitely do that. So, yeah, this is we're finally getting into a slow part of the run, um, <laughs> so if you have some stuff to to say, go for it. <laughs> well, I appreciate you remembering me. I do have a few donations to read. Um, so briefly, we have $10 from Bentley Bun, who says, I've been very excited to see this MGS2 race since it was announced on the schedule. And I'm ready to be sat on the edge of my seat for the next hour. Thank you to the organizers for making all this happen, and to the MGSR community for always helping and inspiring me and others to take up speedrunning. Best of luck to both D-Limes and Jag. Art. And we also have $35 from <laughs> Boogie Poppy. Thank you so much. They say, Raiden, have you heard of the Lali Lule Lo? And uh, time for one more? Sure. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Vermilion donates $10. They say, thank you for hosting the event. Shoutouts to the runners, the commentators, and the amazing MGSR runners community. Honestly, one of the best communities I've ever been a part of. And good luck to both runners. Thank you, Vermilion. Thank you so much for your donations, and it's cool to hear uh, about community members there as well. Absolutely. So... There's a movement set up uh, to this room uh, as you exit Shell 2 Core, just to basically buffer out the guard cycles. A very important component of running these games is knowing guard cycles and how to approach them appropriately. A little uncharacteristic again from Limes. I think he, I don't know what exactly happened there. You're supposed to uh, train that guy, but he just kind of like stood there. It looked like a controller malfunction, to be honest yeah. with you. It was very. Very weird, but he's all good. He's out. Just the just the minor little mistakes that Jag really wants here, right? Yeah, exactly. If uh, he can have a, a better Bolt. guard, then uh, he's uh, good to go. Well, that's uh, that that's definitely too. one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> this this strat works as well. Yeah. And of course, no runner is going to do the Emma bump. You can actually knock Emma through that door, and she will appear further away on the other side of the door as you go through. Um, but it can, in 90% of the time, cause the game to soft lock on HD collection. You'll never see a runner do it on HD collection, certainly not in a race. Oh, um, it's way too risky in a marathon, and in a race, you're 
putting your whole whole run on the run, on the line. I mean, like, ooh, spooky, <laughs> very spooky. It's very nice to see such a close race uh, coming up to the the oil fence before. Um, the, the calm before the storm, I think, the oil fence. The big question for me is whether Limes is going to lethal or not on the oil fence. Still is on Big Boss, right? And as I far as... I think he's... Yeah, I mean, he picked up the PSG-1T, so I think that means he's going to do non-lethal. Um, and uh, Jag will also do non-lethal. It would be a very strange day if we saw... Uh... Saw Jag start doing leafling guards. I just feel like that's something yeah. that will never happen. <laughs> that's uh, very out of character. Very out of character. So, um, this is the sniping sequence, the Twilight sniping. Uh, it's essentially an auto scroller. There are ways to lose time, but there's not really any significant ways to gain time. Uh, we have some things we have to do. We have to take out some claymores, take out some ciphers take out some guards uh main weird mechanic of this is just making sure emma doesn't fall over uh if you look anywhere near her like if she's like oh man ryan's looking at me oh <laughs> the guy with the, the blonde hair that i'm not sure if it's a wig or not oh I, i'm getting nervous then she'll fall over and lose you seven seconds it's very annoying so it's, someone's once said she it's so she can move out the way so you can hit the guards and i, I like it sort of <laughs> no. makes sense when you say it <laughs> but like... she's like oh and she falls over it's not her like ducking yeah but if she if she does happen to fall and emma fall costs about eight seconds so we we do our best to avoid that also so, make yeah. sure to remember all these claymores you do not want a nasty surprise when you uh have emma go all the way around the oil fence it's uh pretty bad yeah um if she dies right at the end of this room you will have to do the entire section again it starts right from the beginning so there's no forgiveness there's no checkpoint <laughs> it's a good way to make you make you feel sad especially if you're on uh big boss pace so yeah, you just take it, you know, guards come out around this, like, these pillars, these, uh, little structures, and you trank them. I mean, there's not a whole lot to explain here, so if you have donations or things to discuss, host, uh, talk away. Sure, well, um, briefly, let me talk about the reason we're here, right? So, we should all know that we're raising money for Alzheimer Fonden. Alzheimer Fonden is the Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Um, did you know that thanks to gifts and wills from private individuals and companies, Alzheimer Fonden was able to distribute almost 30 million SEK last year? Even still, the money is not enough to be able to support all important projects that lie ahead. The Alzheimer Fund could only grant about 19% of the funds applied for. So remember everybody, if you get those donations in, now's a great time to have a chance for them to be read, and it's all going to such a great cause. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, supporting this wonderful cause and uh, watching uh, this marathon. Uh, it means a lot, I'm sure, to the charity and of course to the organizers to see people enjoy these streams. So thank you. Some nice, okay. nice trinking from limes, just spamming those uh, um, trink bullets into their bodies. Chad, Everyone... don't, don't make her nervous. <laughs> no, he's, he's zooming. He's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Everyone has <laughs> their own like little um, quirks when they do this section. I feel everyone does it like slightly differently from each other. I focus so hard on European extreme because I. Uh, it, it's very bad to uh, make a mistake here. It loses a lot of time, uh, especially when you pro the guards are approaching. And you got to remember all these ciphers as well. Jag, instead of uh, firing body shots, is actually going for headshots, going for the, the clean and surgical approach. I respect it. Call, Call of Duty style. Just, just headshot infos. No, Call of Duty style, you gotta go for the 360 no-scope, so you, like, <laughs> swing it around and hope you hit the guard. <laughs> I wanna see someone go for go for that strategy. I, I will... 
I will respect that as well, but in a very different way. <laughs> I've, I've, I've only seen uh, uh, Joe do that in MGS3. He does 360 no scopes in that game. Too good. <laughs> you could go for some really wacky fun stuff in these speed runs. So I, a little. I enjoy shooting all the seagulls personally. <sighs> Man, why why do you have to why do you have to bring that up? If you we, were uh, having, if you... we were having such a good time <laughs> that you're talking about why you like uh, assaulting birds that are just peacefully flying around. What did they do to you? If you've never shot the seagulls before, you you do get an additional codec that's that's really quite funny um, from uh, the Colonel and Rose, so it's definitely worth checking out. <laughs> if you like killing birds, sure. <laughs> the video game birds, it's like a new duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, the birds um, can cause some problems. Um, not so much on this screen, sometimes they can get in the way, but the birds on the shell one two connecting bridge with the sensors um the birds can sometimes fly in the way of the sensors and that can be super annoying and cause you endless problems there so limes is heading into vamp two he started the uh, fight with no ammo purposefully so he can move to the ammo spawn um he's going to just shoot vamp in the same place every time so even when vamp moves ammo left to right he won't move in front of a leg i can't commentate that boss fight fast enough for how quickly it's actually done <laughs> yeah you'd have to really practice for that but it's okay we got another go at it i'll try to say it as quickly as possible we'll see if i can explain it faster than you all that right sounds good yeah that sounds good fantastic this is our own little race of uh commentating all right i have to make sure i wait until she crosses the line all right, so this is Vamp 2. You have to start with, uh, well, he didn't actually start with zero. He started with five. You got to aim for his leg because that's his weak point. It lets you just keep on firing at him. Uh, Jack's actually swapping from spot to spot. It doesn't really matter that much. And then he falls asleep forever until Metal Gear Solid 4. Well done. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned from the best. You, you got your first uh, shot at it. Um, yeah, you might I won't go. <laughs> <laughs> you might be noticing on lime stream that the, there were panels missing and that is something you have to um, you Keep like a little mental note for yourself um, As you're exiting shell one core and that was like 20 minutes ago or whatever like oh those panels uh, Fell down that panel fell down because you don't want to roll and fall down a gap if You roll and fall and game over here. You start at the start of the timer um, That's true across the whole game. So if you ever take a continue while time left is on the screen, it'll start you back where the timer began, which is a huge time loss. Yeah, um, one of the more dangerous sections of the run to take a continue on for sure. I always imagine, you know, on the low difficulties, how the panels come back. Like, does one of the guards come and get collect them from the ocean and repair the bridge? Like, how does it work? Who does that? Oh, they, 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 they have some uh, panels in the back. It's in one of those uh, closets. Oh, and, is that uh, is that what's in the room on the west of this building that you can't go through? That's the room where they keep all the spare panels. Oh well, no, 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 no. They they keep that in one of the struts that you don't access in the oh. the shell two. That makes it's sense. The, it's also where they keep uh, the eighty percent category for Metal Gear Solid two. Um, which uh, fun fact, if anyone can find a major skip for this run, you can earn a cool it's thousand a dollars. Yeah, we have a bounty in the community for that. Got to be usable in a run. You know, like yes. hack the game. You know this fellow. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's enough. It's enough riffing plywood. Here, here we go into the the, the, all right, all the right. hardest section of the run. I know I said it about some other sections in the run, but this one really this is, is the actually the, this is actually the hardest. <laughs> um, calling Rose and then immediately saying I don't want to talk to you. No, 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 no. Um, so Olga just punched us and we lost a third of our life because that's just how it rolls on European Extreme. You get punched and you're already down a third of your HP. You have no gear, no weapons. Um, you're naked. You got nothing. Um, very important as we watch D Limes. This is one of the hardest movement rooms in the game. Uh, you need to hold select to get that codec as soon as possible. That way this Tengu notices us and doesn't actually spot us. Uh, if a Tengu spots you in here, that's an automatic alert. So very important that we don't get spotted. Limes is still on big boss pace. 
Yeah, the Jejunum is uh, very scary. We're going to go left around around this uh, little section, and then we've got to roll over the gap, the dreaded Jejunum gap, uh, which will lose you like 13 seconds or something if you miss it. Lime's very got it. scary to miss that gap, especially in European Extreme. A uh, very clean Jejunum from uh, D Limes as he enters the ascending colon, the long narrow hallway that's very confusing on a casual playthrough. But um, before we get into that, it's, let's see how Jaguar King handles Jejunum. So he knows where the codecs are going to happen, so we can anticipate them and press select on the same frame that they're going to come in. Like a line on the floor that you look for. Yeah, you want to minimize as much time lost from uh, mandatory codex as you can. Uh, clearing the gap just as well as lines. Very nice. Got to avoid these cameras, avoid these tengus, and he did a very good job. So, uh, with ascending colon, you need to just be like in the upper part of the screen, but not too close to the door, and eventually uh, Rose will call you. Uh, something we didn't mention about the HD version that's kind of annoying. Uh, there's this delay that happens whenever a codec pops up, like you get a call. It's like a few seconds, so like if you compare like the Substance version on PC or the Sons of Liberty version on PS2, uh, that that delay that happens right before the codec starts isn't there. And over the course of the run, it, it actually loses a pretty significant amount of time. It's extremely annoying when you go from one to the other. It, like, when you go from one version, like the PC Substance version, to this, it's really frustrating every single time you hit a codec. But if you only play on one version, I suppose you just get used to it. That's right. So, you get the sword. All you have to do is swing it once and stand in the upper half of the room, and then it's just an auto-scroller. Uh, this is a good time for a quick donation if you got one. Um, let's see. Um, well, I do want to mention very briefly uh, that right now you, of course, have a chance to win a few special prizes um, from one of our sponsors, ViewSonic. If you go to prizes.esamarathon.com, uh, you can see that with a minimum donation of $25 or $35, you enter yourself to win two different monitors. Both have very good descriptions. One of them actually uh, actually has a 240 hertz refresh rate at the $25 minimum donation entry. So please donate now for a chance to win one of those prizes. And it is cumulative. So if you donate, you know, $5, you know, five times, you qualify yourself for that $25 minimum donation monitor. Very nice. So, uh, Limes just took a continue, unfortunately. Uh, this is Tangu 1, a uh, very scary part of the run. We're trying to skip this portion, but uh, again, Limes had a little bit... It took, took the very start of it uh, safe. Uh, again, you're very close to death during this sequence. Um, the goal is to PPK oh, he's at the door. Here again. Yeah. It's going to be so scary. Oh, yeah, no. He's got him. All right, so Jag... Jag has a chance to take the lead here. The goal is to get to the door and PPK, and then on the kick of uh, the punch-punch-kick combo, on the kick, you uh, let go of first-person view and you go through the door. That's it. Jag's Dex in the lead now. Ahead. Jag's in the lead, but that doesn't actually mean anything. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, he's in the lead. Well, now it's Tango 2, and Tango 2 has its own skip, and um, there is an issue with this, and... One issue is, is that I'm surprised Jag did not Can't get... Make it. Can't get out. Oh man, Limes cannot get through that door. That's really unfortunate. Um, so Snake here is off to fend for himself as Jag drags a guard, a Tengu guard, over into the corner. The goal is to keep this guard alive. We don't want to kill him. Uh, and eventually he'll be knocked out. Uh, the game gets very confused about why is there a Tengu alive, and it basically assumes that, like, somehow the Tengu never died and something bad happened, so, um, the fight just ends early. The problem with this is, is that Snake is off to fend on his own, and all he has is a pistol. <laughs> so, um, it can get kind of scary for Snake. Sometimes he'll just die and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. 
Um, we, we've seen it in races before, where um, Tengu 2 just killed both runners multiple times, so... And, and there really is nothing you can do, so... We kind of just sit here and hold our breath when this fight goes on. Yeah, and, and Jag, um, because his health was high, um, Snake uses the pistol. You can have Snake uh, use the assault rifle if your HP is low, but he didn't do that. Maybe the just to try to squeeze out some time potentially, and well, it paid off. Um, he's in the lead, but we are now approaching what is probably going to be the kingmaker of this run, potentially, is the Ray's fight. If Jaguar King can have a clean raise fight, it's going to make a huge difference. Uh, because Limes is pretty famous for his quality raise. Yeah, um, the raid fight is about 5-6 minutes, gen generally. Um, someone you know and you can die at any time, you're a one-hit kill to everything um, to apart from the machine gun attack from the Rays. But I've made um, use of you. It, it, it's so, so dangerous, and it, really this was where Solid we'll find out <laughs> who will take the Rays, to be honest. I think Limes could die no! here. No! The Tengu came in! I had to smoke out the agent before the, the Tengu came in! I, I've genuinely just never seen him struggle with the endgame like this. It's never happened before. Jack, those days during the Civil That is War, so rough, Raiders folks. That is so rough. Every day um, was absolute. You know, Split with Tengu 2, like we were saying, some things just you happen beyond your control. You and, like, sometimes Snake can come into this room and, like, bring Tengus in. And we saw right there, Tengu came over and just shot Limes. And that was it. Um, if that happens, you have to just, like, cool in it, but it's rough. All right, we're going into Rays. Um, so there is multiple setups you can go for here, uh, but the goal is to hit the knee, then hit the open mouth. Uh, that'll be a crit shot. Uh, you can also hit a, a crit shot when the Ray does a battle cry and hit the open mouth that way. But generally speaking, we try to shoot the open mouth that way. Yeah, uh, Jack went for a very traditional setup here. Um, he's gonna have to raise great heart, I believe, now, but... An incredibly safe way of doing the fight. There is a much riskier setup you can go for, and I'm almost certain that we'll see uh, New Limes go for it. Yeah, there is a loop that you can go for in this fight. Um, it's very difficult. Um, you have to know how to approach firing the missiles and in what order. Um, we have to kill the equivalent of 20 rays. It's not literally 20 rays, but it's the equivalent to the health bars. So. Um, I think uh, Jack set up quite nicely here now, as long as he's done this one. Yeah, he set up, he set up quite nicely. Yep, just so. have to keep on juggling these rays back and forth. We're essentially just manipulating them to keep them all together, so we can not only fire at them all repeatedly, but also keep the shortest path between us and them. Um, so the Stinger has less to travel, so our damage output is higher, essentially. Um, it's a much more technical fight than I can really go into uh, over the top of the commentary on it, but just like, as long as he's hitting Rays and they're not doing attacks that, you know, at, at the runner, then they're in a good spot. Exactly. Um, one thing you have to be aware of is just the timing on your shots that you don't like whiff if you whiff a missile this loop that jag is doing is very likely to get out of uh out of sync and then you're gonna have to adjust you can't get back into the loop but it's pretty weird but it is possible it's just about staying in the right area because this is where the rays come into the stage and always trying to address that ray on stage as well as you can the ray on stage is the most dangerous ray um, the rays on the outside, what they do is they basically like walk in place until they start walking to their position on the outside of the stage, which is what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to keep them juggled right at the uh, spawn point when they come to the stage. For the longest time with speedrun in this game, speedrunners simply got to this fight and just did their best to survive it. It really wasn't about um, getting the absolute. It was fastest just being time. safe. Like, yeah. Don't die. <laughs> That's all, uh, that's all changed now. 
Limes just takes that missile shot. Yeah, he's going. He's going for the the risky start where you take a machine gun, um, and missiles coming at him. Oof. Big spooks, big spooks. Um, Jack going into the D series. He's getting near the end of the fight. Um, as long as he <laughs> shouldn't. I'm, I don't want to say anything. What am I saying? I shouldn't say anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this ray fight is important. <laughs> yeah, it's just important on all fronts. This make or break it. Um, and as we were mentioning before, practically everything is a one-hit kill. And if you don't know how to respond to the situation, it's sort of like Fat Man, you know? Like, things can get out of hand really quickly. And when they get completely out of hand, you're probably going to die. That one's the rays that managed to break apart, and at that cursed range where you sting has a chance to fail um, as you fire it towards the ray. Jag accidentally hit the wing of the ray, which is always annoying when that happens. But he's looking pretty sharp, I have to say. Like, this is pretty dang clean. That's it. He's out. Excellent. Raise from Jaguar King. GW, Excellent. The arsenal AI is corrupted beyond yeah, I remember Lime saying to me not too long ago, he was like, Jag's getting really good at that ray loop, you know, he wasn't kidding. That was super impressive. So, Jaguar is about to do the infamous torture sequence. Thankfully, it's nerfed on uh, the HD collection version. If you play the original versions of European Extreme, uh, this takes like 60 seconds and you have to mash it like seven presses eight presses a second it's really brutal it's a lot of stamina you have to manage but on hd collection it's not as bad yeah my wrist hurts just thinking about the unnerved uh, torture sequence see whenever you hear that beep that means uh missiles are coming in your direction and you have to avoid them It's a it's an annoying time loss because you have to move out of the way. Ooh. Okay, knee rockets. Um, I didn't want to talk about them because I didn't want to like bring them about for anyone. But uh, we just saw Limes encounter knee rockets. That's the most dangerous attack, arguably, from the rays. You have to time your movement just so. Um, it's very easy to run into those missiles if you're not careful. Uh, Limes is showing exactly what a survival rays looks like. You're constantly right. just on the edge of dying, and, and like every single bit of movement and shot counts. Yeah, it, it you know this this fight is both thrilling and overwhelming um, when you're <laughs> in this sort of situation. As Jaguar uh, starts the final fight of the game, Solidus. So uh, the Solidus fight uh, revolves around a loop. So. Uh, Solidus has a good side and a bad side. I don't mean like looks wise. He's he, he's a good looking man, but uh, he has uh, his eye and then his eye patch. So we attack on the side with his eye um, to make him block. And then we rotate to the other side to punch him with uh, where his eye patch is. Um, if you ever miss, like you ac he accidentally blocks, you just cause him to counter attack and then continue the loop. Yeah, we've got to just push him uh, into the end of his first phase and then we get an unskippable cutscene where he will dash off and then we'll just resume the loop again. Uh, time will be coming up when they do actually get the final hit of Solidus. So that the text away. That's right. Um, one of the weird things about doing this loop is dealing with the camera because the movement is camera sensitive. So, or camera contextual? You get what I mean. Um, yeah, Apache knows. Apache knows for sure, and that's all that matters, clearly. <laughs> so he he removed his Doc Ock uh, octopus arms. Now he's apparently more aggressive. It doesn't actually matter. We're just gonna continue doing the same the same dang loop uh, as D Limes is going into the E series rays momentarily. Um, you can see how much of a difference the um, loop versus survival rays uh, makes as a difference because the missiles have to fly, fly so much further. Well, 
times into the into the E Ray. This Jaguar King is coming up on time oh, very soon. Just block that kick when it comes out. If you fail the loop, it's okay. Just have to respond accordingly. And that's time for Jaguar King. GG Jaguar King place? on that win. Of course. Yeah, absolutely incredible. We first met. Um, really well done to Jack, and I remember now. We will see um, Lime's finish of this game the still. I met um, you. On paper, I think a lot of people would have had Lime's down for winning this race. Um, Jack made very few mistakes. Lime's had a really unfortunate end game. Um, but you no know, respect to both of them. It's such a difficult game to play. Uh, difficult category, especially to play at this level. I think and, I, found something I mean, let's be honest here, future. like, what? these are both excellent runners, excellent runners, to and to do this in a race me? environment is yeah. very stressful, um, since everything possible. counts, and too many um, aren't well done to Jaguar King. King, well done. It's up to us to teach that to our children. What kind of things? About the environment. Our ideas, so, our culture, uh, as we culture, come into the final passion, bit for uh, D Limes joy. 13, um, we'll tell them everything I just want to say thanks to everyone who's watching, even if it's late in Europe. I know it's uh, very late in Europe for some people, but just want to appreciate. And I'm very happy that I got a chance to commentate this race with you, Apache. It's always fun to commentate European Extreme. Absolutely, so love fun. It. I always say it's the one thing I enjoy more than speedrunning is commentating these high level races. For sure, for sure. So, Lime's doing a very similar strategy. Um, you may be wondering why we punch, and that's just because you do more damage ultimately compared to slicing. Uh, you do, you know, that extra punch, so you do three punches. Uh, if you did three slashes, that would knock Solidus to the ground. So every time you, you know you've broken the loop, Solidus will kick you. Uh, we can just block that with our sword and immediately go back into the loop, so runners will recognize when that's about to happen. There is a, like, a, an easier Solidus loop to learn, where you constantly make him kick you, then you damage him, then you make him kick you. Um, much simpler to pick up when you first play European Extreme. The main thing you want to avoid is getting knocked to the floor. Like, if you get knocked to the floor like you accidentally, um, get kicked, he's gonna zip around and it's super annoying. Very nicely done by it, Limes. He uh, finish with a quad shot, a quad punch, uh, knocked him to the floor, and then Solidus did a short dash into this little cutscene. Um, we call it a short dash because it's shorter than him uh, dashing across the roof to the other side. And uh, Solidus gave that. Yeah, we love the minor optimizations and we love that good RNG, so. Um, Solidus came in with the what we call the people's elbow. That's his fastest attack. Um, when he dashes in after the uh, uh, second phase starts, he can opt for different attacks, and the people's elbow is the best one by far. You never get it when you want it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But even so, um, even though there was definitely some heartbreak, some surprise, surprising twists and turns in this run, um, I think they both should be proud of their uh, performance overall because it's a hard game. Time for limes as well. Massive, massive GG, the, the Jaguar King. 100 percent um yeah so i want to uh just say thank you all for watching i don't know if uh the host has anything they want to mention but we can do a few shout outs if not uh yeah no go ahead with your shout outs for sure fantastic well i'll let you start apache if you have some shout outs to make yeah um definitely uh 
follow these two guys, Jaguar King and D Limes13. They both stream on Twitch all the time. They stream. Um, Jag streams every Metal Gear Solid Gear game on the planet, and Lime streams mostly uh, Solid One and Two. Um, definitely follow Plywood as well, who did commentary with me today. Um, really good streamer. Um, if you like Twitter, follow me on Twitter at Apache Smash. Um, we are from a community called Metal Gear Speedrunners. Um, we have a website which is MetalGearSpeedrunners.com, and we have a Discord. You are welcome to join it if you want to learn any of the Metal Gear games. Um, we are a very proud and helpful community, and we always like new runners joining us. And yeah, we'd be glad to, glad to have you. And uh, my shout outs are uh, follow Apache Smash on Twitter. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, we were really uh, thankful that uh, ESA uh, gave us the chance to showcase this game uh, at a high level on a race. Uh, such a cool race game because so much can happen uh, uh regardless of whether you're a high level runner low level runner uh or everything in between uh always a fun sight to see on european extreme so uh much appreciated to everyone uh who watched and donated what am i